Hello there and welcome to a brand new series here on my channel and a returning series over on HG Central. This is Silly Car Showdown. Some of you might remember Silly Car Showdown, it was a series I did here on Forza Motorsport 7 around a year or so ago uh, where basically we took cars around Brands Hatch, did a bunch of silly upgrades to them and saw which one was the quickest. It lasted for about 20 episodes or so uh, but unfortunately at the time I had various other projects that I was working on but well this time this year uh, there isn't so much to work on in fact I'm quite ahead of myself as far as schedules go so I figured uh, we would begin filming the second round of Silly Car Showdown which is going to be taking place here on Forza Horizon 4. Now uh, one bonus of Horizon 4 over Forza Motorsport 7 is there is a lot more unique upgrades to the cars. There is a lot more engine swaps that are unique to the cars. Uh, there's a lot more sort of you can do customization wise, which is very nice. But there are a few new rules. Now, in the previous series, of course, uh, rules were very simple. The cars had to stick with their standard drivetrain, and that was the real only rule with it. And, well, they had to be fully upgraded, pretty much. In this series, we're keeping those two rules, however there is a third one to add. The cars, apart from filling some wide bodies, because some wide bodies do add it, the cars cannot run any Forza Aero. No wings. Well, you can have wings from the manufacturer, but they are not allowed to be adjustable wings. This should make things very interesting indeed. And when you see the track and the conditions we're racing in, you'll suddenly realise it's very, very, very interesting indeed. So, of course, uh, to kick off the series, we do need to set a benchmark time around the track that we're going to be using, which is one that I've made, and the car that we're going to be using a benchmark for as well, a, a very silly real-life build, the TVR Speed 12. A car so mental, even TVR didn't build it in the end. The test driver took it home one day, and then came back the next day and said, no, no. So I feel like it is a very adequate car Indeed, to be the first car to go around the Silly Car Showdown track. Speaking of which, let's head to it. Anyways, here we are at the Silly Car Showdown course here in Edinburgh. And as you can see, I wasn't wrong about the adverse conditions. We are in the middle of winter and there is a blizzard going on. Just to make things that extra a little bit more difficult for the cars. Anyways, they will have five laps to set the best time they possibly can. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Anyways, we will go at two minutes in the TVR to set the benchmark time for every car that comes after this one. What I will say is technically it is more like four laps considering the cars <clears throat> are getting sort of a short start there. I was going to make this a six lap challenge. However, six laps around this course simply takes way too long. It is about a three mile course, it takes about two minutes-ish to complete, that's my sort of standard time with it, so yeah. But anyways, as you can see, it is actually a pretty technical course all in all. I try to give it as much variety as possible. A lot of the tracks here in Horizon 4, uh, as you'd expect, focus on speed and downforce and so on and so forth. And I kind of wanted to make a course that tries to test the cars in a variety of earlier years. And I feel like I've done reasonably well with this one. It is essentially a city course with some technical aspects as well as some high speed aspects. So down here, obviously the cars can get a lot of speed. But there's this really arsehole corner right here, uh, which you do definitely have to watch out for. There is some speed bits, there's some low speed bits, and ultimately this should test the car in multiple ways, which should, in theory, give us uh, a bit of, well, it'll basically make it so the cars, uh, you know, will have strengths in different areas. It won't just be about who can be the fastest car in a straight line. I love that switchback area there, by the way. I'm usually better uh, than that. I haven't really practiced this track today. So, I guess the TVRs are at a small disadvantage in that aspect, but then again, considering it'll be probably one of the less crazy cars we drive around here, maybe a uh, disadvantage is what it may slightly need. But yeah, it is actually a pretty fun course. If you do want to go ahead and have a look at it, I believe the blueprints for it. I, I don't quite know how sort of the sharing of the tracks works, uh, but if you do have want to have a go at this track, bollocks, 
Uh, we will do a quick rewind there. Which I don't think matters. I think the lap time... I don't know if the lap times get affected by rewinds or not in PvP races. Which unfortunately is the way I'm having to do this. Because this game, for whatever reason, does not have a rivals mode. I won't get angry about it, but I will be angry about it. Uh, so basically your choices as to running one of these series is either you sit at the back of the track, let the AI overtake you and then drive, or you do what I'm doing, which is you basically set up a PvP lobby with someone and then they go ahead and run off. Our volunteer for today is the very generous Azza, who has decided to step in and, well, basically skill farm uh, while we're doing this. But yeah, uh, the AI, the other guys shouldn't affect the cause at all. They basically, I tell them to go and find a place to hide or, you know, do whatever skill farm. It is a little bit boring for them uh, and trust me, I do try to make it so... I, I really don't like doing this to people because it does sort of feel a bit like, I don't know, I'm getting a lot of reward here and you're not getting much, so the least I can do is uh, shout them out. Yeah, you all know Azza if you've been on my channel and if you're here on HG Central. Uh, he's a good dude. He's basically my right-hand guy. Uh, also, if I run into his car when it's going backwards, I believe it's in ghost mode, so it should be alright. But even still, uh, we're just basically staying out of each other's way, and that's the way we are going to work this out. Anyways, hopefully do not mess up that first corner again. The one thing you do have to remember with it being in winter is your breaking points are all weird. You really, like this corner, you need to slow down for it super early, otherwise you're going to do what I did last time, which is go straight into it. You might also notice the checkpoints are actually on the road and not crossing over with the pavement. That was intentional to add a little bit of extra difficulty to this. So basically, I can't just go on the pavements to hit checkpoints. I do actually have to be on the road. Although then again, the pavements, due to the fact they're snowy, I'm assuming they're more slippery, so I don't quite know how much advantage you'd really get by pavement riding particularly, uh, but it is something that is best avoided. But yeah, if you want the blueprint for this, I believe it's called SCS Edinburgh. Of course, uh, you just follow the real Emil on the uh, blueprint thing. Again, I'm not too sure how that works, but I think that's how it works. As far as the TVR goes to drive, I certainly did pick a slippery eel to drive around this uh, for the first time. This car is, uh, it does not have a whole lot of traction, it is very, very quick, uh, it is very, very mental. I do adore the, uh, the Speed 12, it is a really cool car. Maybe this will have to return as a contestant at some point, uh, where we make it extra silly and see if it does any better, but as of now, it is going to be our benchmark car. I believe PI-wise this one sits in S-Class, about 784. So we're going to get a fair few cars that are going to be higher PI than this. We're going to get a fair few cars that are going to be under on PI compared to this. Although PI is not really a decent way of knowing how quick some of these cars are going to be. Just because of the nature of the way this works, obviously. Just because it's higher PI usually just means the power to weight ratio is better. Um... You know, the PI isn't really that indicative of how quick a car is going to run around here. Uh, and of course, one advantage of this being PvP is the game uh, does not actually uh, care what class of car we run in. Uh, it is anything goes. So, if any car does manage to hit X class, which it shouldn't do, uh, it should be... Yeah, it's perfectly eligible. It should be able to run around here. I did not hit that checkpoint. Bollocks. I'm going to try and leave rewinding to a minimum. Again, I don't know if it actually helps the course clock, but it is obviously better to rewind than it would be to go ahead and try and sneak through that checkpoint or get reset. So, I don't know. I really should be keeping an eye on the top. Currently, our best lap time is a 151.482, which isn't too bad. I think this lap might be a throwaway, but the next lap... Uh, probably, well, our next lap's going to be our final case to set a good time with the Speed 12, which hopefully we can go ahead and do. 
so that would be good. In case you're wondering, you can absolutely request cars uh, for me to run around this series. I will say a couple of caveats. Uh, if you do want to request a car, I'm currently only accepting a... There is a limit of two cars per person. Uh, although, as soon as you see one of your cars be used, you can then go ahead and request another car. Uh, there's been quite a few requests already. I think I'm up to 20 or 21 on my spreadsheet, so it is already proving to be relatively popular. So if you want to request the car, there is a chance it may have already been requested. I will endeavor to go ahead and tell you if that is indeed the case. Uh, you can request the car. You can also, if you want a specific engine in the car, you can tell me that. Although I will say to you, uh, any other like specific modifications I can't do some people said in the previous you know oh you should run the cars on you know you should run the cars like this on stock tires like no I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna because otherwise it's just unfair you know so gotta run the cars all the same you know afforded the same amount of modifications admittedly of course this car is being ran stock but that's the only one that is getting that treatment because, of course, it is the benchmark car for this course. Anyways, we had a pretty good first sector. The first sector is the hardest part of the course. The second sector is a hell of a lot easier. Sort of once you come around this corner, uh, things do start becoming a little bit easier. The track starts to open up a little more. You do have to worry about this corner, though, because it will really catch you out. Because this is a rear-wheel drive car. It does get its ass out. Of course, four-wheel drive cars probably going to have the major advantage during this series, or at least that's what we're expecting. Maybe uh, there could indeed be some surprises, but as of right now, I'm currently expecting the rear-wheel drive cars, or rear-wheel drive cars to suffer. Front-wheel drive cars, I have no idea. Uh, there's not a whole lot of them to really run around here, but I'm sure someone will request some of them, so we'll have to see how well... Uh, those do. Uh, I don't quite know what that's gonna do, if that's gonna boot me out of the game or not. Uh, but either way, the TVR does not beat its previous time. It gets a 151.482, which is the final time for the Speed 12. Of course, what that means is it puts it in first place, because nothing else has ran around here yet, so that's what it gets. Um, but, you know, is that a good time? Is it not a good time? I don't really know, to be honest with you. But I guess we'll find out in the upcoming days and weeks. I should point out, the second episode of this, where I'm actually going to be customising a car and building it to go around this course, is going to be going up um, in the same day as this one, and then this series is going to be three times a week. And if you do want to have a couple of hours, or maybe a day or two, depending on how this works out, Basically, my channel is going to run the episodes before they run on HG Central. So if you want an exclusive look at the cars, come check out my channel at The Real Meal. There is a link in the description down below. But anyways, thank you very much for watching this very first edition of the Silly Car Showdown here on Horizon 4, as I like to occasionally call it. Super Silly Car Showdown. And until next time, farewell.